So, do you want to hear a story? Okay, I'll tell you a story. This is a story that I learnt from a fantastic book called Sussex Folk Tales by Michael O'Leary. And it harks back to the 1930s. Now, the 1930s were an interesting time. Things were starting, just starting to become really recognisable as, as modern life like we know it. Um, but it was only just beginning. So people were maybe starting to get toasters and electrical things around the house. Cars were appearing, not many. It was the bus network was opening up the roads of the Downs to the people who lived in the little towns along the coast. And radios starting to appear, but not many people would have had televisions. It was cinema. Cinema was the most exciting new entertainment of the age. But for the older people, they liked to still carry on doing things the way they'd always done. They liked to have fun by getting together at country pubs and making music together, singing songs, playing tunes. And this carried on all through the mid 20th century. Um, I spoke once to Vic Smith, who was a folk club organiser, who said that even in the 1960s, and this was still happening, and they would sing old songs that had been in the family for generations. They'd sing Delilah, because they heard it on the radio the night before. Um, but in the 1930s, back then in the 1930s, there was one musician who was really special, Charlie Winnick. He played the harmonica, and he was the best, the best harmonica player in Sussex at that time. But the story is, the reason why he was so good is that he was taught to play by the fairies. Fairies. Except they didn't call them the fairies in Sussex at that time. They called them the Pharisees, which is an interesting name. And that's another story, but the Pharisees. And they lived out in the countryside, under the ground, in the earth beneath our feet. And they were said to be a little bit bigger than a squirrel, a little bit smaller than a fox. And there are lots of old stories about these little risen, knobbly, nibbly, knobbly beings with long noses who used to live out there and the mischief that they could cause but the blessings that they could give also. And this is a story about Charlie Winnick. So Charlie always had a harmonica when he was young, when he was a little boy and he used to take it with him everywhere he went and he loved to just make a noise on it because obviously it's such a good thing for making noise on. Just noise, noise, noise all day long. And sometimes people would be happy to hear it, but often the other boys and girls really were just wanted to do something different. And they'd say, Charlie, Charlie, will you just stop, stop with the noise? Sometimes the grown-ups would be very happy to hear it, but sometimes they just have so much else they were trying to do. And so they'd just say, please, will you give me a moment's peace? Charlie would go off on his own, but he didn't let it bother him. He always just enjoyed making his noise. And there was one particular tune that he'd written all by himself that he liked to make most. And he called it Mount Caban's Revenge. And he'd play this all over the place. But the thing is, sometimes people could get quite mean. And sometimes this really did bother Charlie. And one day, when he was walking home from school, he'd stopped to lean on a stone bridge over a river to play Mount Caban's Revenge, making his noise. And two bigger boys came along. And they saw Charlie there and they thought, well, we can have some fun with this. And they started teasing him. And they started laughing at him, calling him all sorts of names. And Charlie did what he should do and he just ignored them. But because they weren't getting the response they were looking for, they started throwing stones at him. Can you imagine? And Charlie was quite upset by that. So he ran away. And he ran down from that stone bridge, down the riverbank, through the long grass and down into the bushes. Splash, 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 across the river and up the other side. And he managed to lose them, and he could hear them wandering off, laughing about how clever they'd been. But there he was on his own. He didn't feel so happy now. And so he sat on the fence by the side of a turnip field, play a long, slow tune to make himself feel better. And there, on the other side of this fence, in the turnip field, was a morkin. Do you know what a morkin is? Well, a morkin is an old Sussex word for a scarecrow. So there it stood. Charlie was playing his long, slow tune. And he looked up. 
the walking had moved. He thought, ah, it's strange. Walking can't have moved. So he carried on playing. Every time he looked up, the walking had moved again. And he carried on playing, and it would move again. And it was getting closer and closer and closer until its big turnipy face was right up next to his. And he was about to run when it spoke. And it said, climb on my back, Charlie Winnick, and I'll take you for a ride. He didn't know what to say. He never had a Morkin speak to him before. And he was going to get out of there as quick as he could, but the Morkin grabbed him with its straw hands and it put him on its nibbly, knobbly wooden back. And do you know what it did then? It flew. The Morkin flew off out of that scarecrow field, away from the river and the little stone bridge, and they soared up over the downs. He could see the great green and white slopes laid out below him. And he could see the little town of Brighton there on the seafront. And he could see Lewis in the valley with its castle. And they were flying over. And the little village of Glyne there with Mount Caburn, the great slope of the downs, lifting up behind him. And he realised they're getting closer to Mount Caburn. And they flew round it three times and then soared down towards the great steep face. And then he realised they were going faster. And they were going faster. And they were going faster and faster and faster. And it looked like they were going to hit it. But just before they struck, doors opened in the side of the hill. And they flew inside. And inside was a cavern lined with torches and big long tables laid out for a feast, the most amazing feast you ever saw. And all around were all these little people, a little bit bigger than a squirrel, a little bit smaller than a fox, dancing round. And from among the crowd there came one who was even taller than the rest, the leader of the Pharisees. And he cried out to Charlie, 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 my boy, thank you for coming. Give us some music, play your harmonica so we can dance at our feast. And Charlie said, well, that's very kind, but the thing is, I'm really, I don't know many tunes, I really just like to make a noise. But they said, don't worry, don't worry, you'll be fine. Play the music. So he did. And do you know what came out? <laughs> But even better than that, it was just the most exciting, energetic dance music you could ever imagine. And the Pharisees danced all night and Charlie danced with them and they gave him ginger beer and sandwiches and the most amazing food he could ever hope for. And then just as the sun was coming up and they were all starting to drop, then the chief of the Pharisees came forward again and he said, Charlie, my boy, Charlie, thank you so much. You've given us such a great time. You can go home now. Morkin, Morkin, come here. That Morkin came jigging out of the crowd because he'd been dancing with the rest of them. And he plucked Charlie on his back again and Charlie held on to the rough, nibbly, nobbly wood. And away they flew again, out of the doors in the hill over Glynde, past Lewis and its castle, over the curves of the Downs with Brighton there on the seafront. And then they landed, just where it all started, by the fence, by that turnip field, by the river. And the walking plonked himself back into the ground, and Charlie dusted himself off, and he could just hear his mother's voice, crying, Charlie, Charlie, where are you? Because they'd been looking for him all night. They didn't know where he'd been. Charlie ran to go and meet them. And they were so happy to see him. They gave him such a big hug. And when he told them what had happened, he told them about the bigger boys, then you'll be glad to know those bigger boys got a very big telling off for what they'd done. But the thing is, nobody really believed Charlie about the Pharisees. And so he got quite a big telling off as well. But after that, every time he lifted the harmonica to his lips, But even better than that, the most exciting, energetic dance music that you ever heard. And so people started to wonder, maybe there had been something in it after all. So that's the story of how Charlie Winnick, the best, the best harmonica player in Sussex in the 1930s, was taught to play by the Pharisees. <laughs>